how big was your win at, at I think that was was that Boston you won last year? I think it was Boston. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How big was that for you? Because I mean, again, injuries. Your your early season, your early career stuff was phenomenal. Your results, your wins. We all know you should have been that champion the one year, if not for you know the the practice crash. Um, but so it's been a while, and then you got the win. Like that thing, that win last year has to just like sort of make you a little more sane. That he, he won last year. Yeah. Oh my god. Twenty twenty two. Really? <laughs> yeah. Dude. That is insane. It's been so long. I feel like he's been gone so long. Like I don't even remember that. <laughs> I think it was yeah, Boston. No, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, it was. It was. It was last yeah. year. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was the. It was when Jet wrapped it up. He wrapped it up that night. Um. So like but, how um, that was that had to been just be like okay shit I got it still like I still got this. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That that's kind of what it was and 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 everybody was saying oh you know you beat Jet and he didn't have to win he didn't have to win he was racing for the championship you know whatever whatever yeah, yeah who cares he, he's yeah. still he's still fast. <laughs> and he was still, I could, I, whenever I rewatched it, he was, he wasn't just rolling over. So I was, I was happy with that. Um, uh-huh. and I can't, had to came through, come through the pack, um, that, that race too. So yeah, that was, uh, I was, I was pretty happy with that race. I mean, that was, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, my wins have been getting less and less frequent over the past few years. Just, you know, it's, more injuries yeah. getting tougher and tougher to run up front so that that was that was good um that was really good just confidence wise sure. um but th- that that's the that's the shitty thing about this sport is is um you know you were just saying yeah it was just last year that you won but i mean it was it was like you know well was it was yeah. it last year <laughs> yeah like, I know. sorry I know. that's well, my I fault mean, it's like oh you you won you i won last year but like you know who what have you done for me last who, week like, yeah you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like no. and and your confidence level it's it's hard to to keep, you know, unless you're you're up there running up front on a on a, you know, pretty standard basis. It's it's hard to keep confidence up of being like, you mm-hmm. know, be just being able to show up to the race and be like, Yep, I'm I'm the guy. Like I, I know I should be up front. So that's what that's what I feel like helped a lot this weekend too, mm-hmm. just being able to run up there and have have kind of constant pressure on me for fifth. Um make some passes to get up to fifth, even though, yeah, it's just fifth, but, and I, you know, wasn't anywhere close to the, to the leaders, but, um, that yeah. was a step in the right direction. I feel like that was a, that was a pretty good result for me. And, and yeah, the win last year was, was definitely strong. That's why I felt like I was in a good place coming into Supercross this year. I felt like I was in a pretty good place and I was ready to do battle. I and, heard, I heard some, I heard some test track stuff about you really riding well and looking really good uh, before the year. I don't know who told me I was with Adam. I don't know who it was, but someone was like, dude, Forkner's ripping right now. Um, you know, so they, they, it, everything was looking good for you. That yeah. Way. Yeah. That's, that's why I was so, you know, such mm-hmm. a, such a bummer of what happened. Just, um, you know, and then I was fast with qualifier during you know that's at, right like one yeah and, that's I right mean, yeah qualifying is is whatever you know take it with a grain of salt but uh yeah. you know i was faster than jet that day and <laughs> hardly anybody else qualified faster than him all year that's yeah. true you know, that was yeah. it was just yeah just a bummer i mean just one of those things it was i mean injuries it's not it, it wasn't you know the pain or it wasn't like oh my my knee it hurts it was just you know yeah. i'm out for Possibly the year. That was literally my first thought when I was laying on the track was like, man, I may have just blown this whole year. And I felt so strong and so good coming into it. Yeah. I may have just blown the whole year. So yeah. That, that was, yeah, that was, that was definitely a bummer. Um, but, you know, it yeah. is what it is. I'm, nope. I'm made some changes since then, started working with Rhino. Hopefully, I mean, maybe that'll, maybe that's a good change. You know, I, I'm working with Charles Dow off the bike now. I'm, I'm living in California, which yeah. I don't, really know that the whole California thing is a great change, but is what it is. Maybe I just need to change the scenery. So now we're, uh, yeah, well, we're going to see. Hopefully it'll uh, bring a little bit better results. I was going to ask you about that because I don't like, I don't think, I don't think Robbie, your old guy, Robbie Renard, I don't think he's a big fan of mine because I've been saying publicly for a couple of years, nothing against Robbie Renard and the Oklahoma thing that you've been doing, nothing against him. He's super smart. He's got it. But I was like saying, dude, you just you got to change it up. Like you just a different voice, a different track, a different place. Um, it, it, you've seen it over the years with guys getting in ruts and all of that. And again, Robbie helped you win a lot of races. So you know, it's not a bad thing on Robbie Reynard. It's just everybody needs a change, man. And, and you get out of a rut and try to fix what you're doing because it wasn't working for you in terms of getting injured. You know, and again, not Robbie's fault. 
But yeah, make some life changes, man. And you yeah. sounds like you're doing it. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly kind of just the. I mean, and I, I just needed somebody out here like me and Robbie. He's he's like a father figure to me mm-hmm. in, in a way. Like you know, I've worked with him since I was you know on super minis basically. So he's he's um, you know even that I've been working with Rhino, I still talk to Robbie on a, like a weekly basis. But yep. yeah, I mean, I Mitch wanted me to be in California, so I'm pretty semi permanent in California right now, and I. Robbie just he's got a training facility he's got three kids now you know he, mm-hmm. he can't be out here as much as I need him to be so we, we knew it was coming like he we sure. were on good terms and everything but yeah it was uh, honestly Rhino too he really wasn't on my radar at all and I went to Paula for the first motos and he was up in the Fox Tower and we started talking and he was like hey you want to come out and ride a turn track whenever you're back to riding and I was like huh hmm. yeah sure why not and then I did it and he said a lot of uh you know, good thing. And he wasn't as crazy as everybody makes him out to be, you know? I mean, yeah, he he says some things every now and then that you're like, Oh geez, I know. But that's just, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Like, it's just, that's just who he is. Um, there's some great Rhino Loretta stories I heard. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He was telling me some stories just from this year that uh, you were, were yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. There was some, I was getting some text about, Oh boy. He's not yeah. scared to yeah. say it, though. He, yeah. he said if there was a trophy for having the most fun, he definitely won. So <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it with, with some of his stories. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, I, I felt the things that he was teaching me. Sure. You know, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was not just, hey, I'm telling you to do this. I'm telling you to do that. It was like, oh, I actually feel some uh-huh. of these changes. And um, that's what he told me at the beginning of the day. He was like, look, if you get through the day and you don't feel a difference, then, hey, we'll part our ways. No harm, no foul. If, but if you feel something, I'm probably not going to have to convince you, you know, to, 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 for us to work together. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what happened. And we, we went to a turn track and then the next day we went to a real track and it kind of, I felt a pretty good, uh, change with, on both tracks. And I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. why not? Let's, let's, yeah. let's give it a try. And, and, um, you know, like I said, I, I switched to working with Charles Dow off the bike, uh, at the beginning of this year. So, um, yeah, you know, Good. um, yeah, I listen, man. I don't know for fact that everything's, you know, working out cause I haven't obviously raced it, but I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think change is a bad thing. Like you said, just about being stuck in a rut or, or stuck. Yeah. You know, and, and change, can, change can be try. scary too. So props to you for moving to California and working with a new trainer and, you know, and doing all of that, that, that ain't easy. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. for a guy like you that, you know, you've made a lot of money. You've won a lot of races doing it a certain way. Um, but it's smart of you to be like, fuck, I got to do something, you know? So, yeah, yeah, you know, that, that's what, that's what I'm, and that's what Rhino tells, like all, he ends almost every day by telling me, thank you for being, for listening. Thank you for trying things today. Thank you for being open today mm-hmm. with, with writing and stuff. And that, that's what, I, that's kind of just my attitude right now. It's like, look, like I know how to ride a dirt bike. I'm pretty good at riding a dirt bike, <laughs> but obviously certain things in what I've been doing haven't been working. So I'm down to try almost just about anything, you know, like, I mean, that's what on the bike, I'll try it. If I don't like it, if I think it's just absolutely stupid, then, uh, then maybe I won't keep doing it, but I'll try just about anything right now. Like there's not, there's no hurt. There's, you know, nothing to lose by trying stuff, you know, and that's, that's where, that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, look, I'm like, I, I still, you know, have some belief in myself and I still think I can be a top guy. Um, but obviously I just need to fix a couple things and mainly it's just getting hurt. It's just not yes. being at the races. If I can be at the races, I mean, I feel like if I can be at all the races, I can, you know, be one of the top guys, but it's just being there. So that's just what I kind of worked on. And I think some of the technique stuff that Rhino has been helping me with will hopefully, I think, I think will translate into making me hopefully a, a, a safer and mm-hmm. faster rider and, you know, less crashes and stuff. That's kind of right. the goal and what he's teaching me and, and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I don't think it's a, you know, change can, uh, here. It, it, yeah, it was a little bit scary. I'm going to be honest. Like <laughs> I, I haven't really, I haven't worked with anybody else since I went pro. So yeah. it was a little bit, but you know, it's been, uh, it's been going good so far. Well, listen, uh, just one thing with Rhino, he told Kiefer to take off his knee braces and Kiefer tore the shit out of his knee. So let's keep the braces on. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't said anything about the. Knee okay, braces let's keep the yet. braces on. Um, what you should do is just show up with a fucking neck brace on to ride and see what he does. 
<laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that that's that's next level. Like if you he's gone on a couple neck brace tantrums to me. Like yeah. it, knee braces. Like okay, I feel like he can deal with that. Um, but, but the neck but brace. If I yeah. showed up with a neck brace. <laughs> oh, dude. Just show would. up with like two of them on your neck. And just be like, yo, what's up? We ready he, to do this shit? Him and I got into it one time over neck braces, and I was like, dude, Ryan Villapoto won four Supercross championships in a row with a neck brace. Like I, yeah. I, I, I'm fine with you saying like you don't like neck braces. Like whatever, that's your opinion. But you can't <laughs> say Rhino that you can't go fast because Ryan Villapoto yeah. went fucking fast with a neck brace. Yeah, I need, so. I need to show up with like one of the original. Yes, yes, yes. The, yes. Like, the OG, like, Liet from, like, yes. 008 or 2010 or whenever they oh, first came out. Like, you can't even move your head. Those were gnarly. Yeah, you can't, you can't even turn your head. That would be, that would be <laughs> Those were so gnarly, those ones. Yeah, you're right. God. You'd be look, look at right like, what yeah. the fuck are you looking at? Like, what's your problem? Yeah, what's the problem here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, real quick. So, when Rhino teaches you teaches you these techniques, do you actually apply them when racing? Because I know how it is, like practicing you can think about what he's telling you but when you're in race mode and you got shit going on all around you is it hard to remember these things that are just now getting into your brain yeah for sure yeah. i mean that's what yeah definitely hard um that's why like like i feel like it's really good having a, a mechanic that was a in NX Pro, or that was a rider, obviously, mm -hmm. like Tony is. Yep. Um, Tony he, he knows all that stuff. Right. Like, he, he, he gets it, you know, more than I feel like a lot of mechanics do that haven't ever ridden, or, or like, ridden, or especially ridden at a professional level. Like, he, he, he gets things like that. So, him being at the track every day, it's almost like Rhino's training him as well, because mm. he's taking all that info in, and then he's watching, he's not riding, he's watching me, but he's seeing it translate in certain spots and seeing what it can do for my riding or whatever, whether it be how my bike works in bumps or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, while Rhino hasn't, been, hasn't came to any of the races so far, Tony can just, he, he can watch me and he can, you know, put on the board to remind me of certain things. But yeah, it's definitely hard to, um, to uh, implement that stuff yeah. at the races. Like that's, that's, that's really tough. So that's, um, you know, I, I try to remind myself and that's why, um, that was what I was talking about earlier with seal is, and that's exactly what Rhino said. And, and it, it a hundred percent, right. He's like, if, he's like, I know because I'm a motocross rider talking about him. He was like, if I feel something that right. will make me faster, if I, if I implement something on the dirt bike and I feel it and it feels better, whether it feels faster, just more in control makes the bike work better, whatever it is. If you feel that it's better, you're not, you would be, you would be an idiot to not continue to do it. You know, if it, if you feel it make it make a difference. So that's what, and that's what I noticed with them right away was just that these certain things, it made me feel better on the bike. It made the bike feel better. All, all this stuff related to feel. Yeah. But that's when, when you notice a difference, then it locks into your head a little bit harder than just somebody just telling you, hey, do this, do this, do this. Because then I'm like, oh, well, there's a purpose behind why I'm doing it. Like, I actually feel the difference that it's making in my writing style or my writing. So it, it's easier to kind of get locked into my head. Right. Um, now, there are certain things, like, that are harder to, to break habit-wise. And that's, I mean, that's just kind of still some of the things that I'm dealing with. But um I feel like the main thing that he was teaching me was, which, which kind of was, was in my hips was just straightening my, uh, I guess, rotating more from my hips, um, and straightening my back out a little bit more. Um, that I feel like I've got pretty locked in now. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe not everywhere. And that's what he says. He's like, look, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be like this everywhere. Like not everywhere. When you're trying to break a bad habit, are you going to do it? It's just, you know, try to try to be thinking about that stuff. And I, and I remember like it's starting to become a little bit of a uh, habit now. Like mm -hmm. I remember doing it a few times at Unadilla and some of the flicker spots. And I was like, Oh, I really didn't even have to think about doing that. I just kind of did it. And so that's, that it's starting to become habit. But yeah, after doing something for all these years um, and just having a certain writing style that, um, you know, I've had, yeah. uh, beating out an old habit is definitely tough, especially with only, you know, working on it for 
like a month and a half or two months with Rhino before going back to the races, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty tough. I, I would say by next by next uh, season, I'll mm-hmm. have it hopefully a little bit more locked in. But um, yeah, I feel it already starting to, beca- to become muscle memory because I just know that certain uh, like some of these things that he's teaching me can't actually make a difference on how I feel on the bike. You know what so, I say? When in doubt, beat it out. Yeah, <laughs> you know. What I mean, <laughs> I mean that's that's I'm, that's. That's what I'm trying. That's what that's what I'm trying to do. Um, that's what I'm I'm trying. Pretty much everything he's telling me, whether or not I I like it or it yeah. sticks really well, is kind of the thing. But certain of the thing, certain of the things he's telling me that I do feel a difference. They are, you know, they're yeah. they're easier to make stick because of of the fact that I notice a difference. Uh, Where unless if you're just telling me, hey, do this, do that, it's yeah, you're like, like okay. what? Yeah, Did you're you feel it. Yeah, yeah, feel it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Austin Forkner here on the Pulp Mech Show, presented by Renegade Race Fuels. Uh, please check them out if you can. Uh, Austin, at one point, you know, you were on a fast track to a 450 ride with Factory Cowie, and it was all working out to plan, and obviously been injuries since then. You'll be with PC next year, from what I understand. Uh, is there a plan to go into the big truck? Uh, obviously, I mean, you still want to do it, but like, or is it just like, hey, I got unfinished business in the 250s, and we'll worry about it then? Um, I mean, to be honest, at this point, 